quality opposition. At the end, we're 13 against 16. It's hard. Uh, we hung in there. Uh, I thought we were brilliant performance by the team. You know, we had guys, two guys didn't train till Wednesday. We had one guy played 80 minutes for the first time for a long time. So really our resources were tested. We got out enough in the second half. We had that setback in the early in the second half. I thought our recovery emotionally for that was outstanding and then we went on and played a good tough game of rugby. 13 against 16, did you say? Yep. Who was the 16? You worked that out. What did you make of the right part? Uh, well, I just find it bizarre. You know, I usually don't comment, but I can't see how you can tackle a guy. So you might as well just say, if someone's tackled like that, you let him go. Because how else are you supposed to tackle him? Like this bit about where your arms are. What a load of rubbish. Like Manny was trying to kill the tackle. That's the only thing he was trying to do. Absolute rubbish. So I'm sorry. I've broken my rule. Do you think the directives are wrong? Or, or well, I just think there's no common sense applied in that situation. Now, clearly the guy's falling. There's a good chop tackle. We can come, uh, uh, manage coming over the top to kill the tackle. And he's doing everything that's, that's he's supposed to be doing. He gets red carded. Like, come on. Do you, are you disappointed the way Wales came back? Or do you feel that was a uh, good Well, that? when you've got a three-man advantage, it's... Uh, you're going, to, you're going to do some damage to your team. And, that, and that's what happened. And I thought we were exceptional. You know, we got a tough call, our number eight coming out. Got called for a mall. We probably get a ruck there. We kick that ball out. That's the end of the game. We win 30, whatever it was, 33-16. But they got the possession and then it made it difficult. Which they were chasing the game. And we had a numerical disadvantage. So it was tough. There was a moment in the first half where it looked like Joe Marler might have um, grabbed Adam Wynne Jones. Between the legs. Did you see that? Anything you made of that? Did you see it? On the replay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, mate. Um, overall, this is the end of the Six Nations for now, you're campaigning for now. How do you assess how it's gone, do you feel? Yeah, no, really good. No, we're a better team now than we were at the World Cup. In, in what way do you feel you've been uh, Well, just our ability. We can play sharp, we can play quick when the occasion allows us to as we do against Ireland and, and occasions against Wales and then we can really tough it out, out and find a way to win. That's what pleased me today. Is the pressure now on France in terms of the, the championship? You know? Well we're not worried about the rest of it mate. All we can worry about is ourselves. And what do you do next week? Uh, well the staff are going to have a bit of a review of the Six Nations. The players will we'll do that with the players on Sunday and then they'll go back to their clubs on Monday. Oh, and your thoughts on that game and the campaign as a whole? Uh, yeah, I thought the campaign, I thought we've grown throughout it. Um, and that's that's credit to everybody. Everybody um, that's been that's been in camp, players and staff. Um, to make sure that that happened, it doesn't just happen. Um, they've worked incredibly hard to make sure that that happens. And as far as today, I thought it was a brilliant fight. Um, obviously at the end, we're numbers down, but not just that. I thought when Wales got some ascendancy like like they would do, um, because they're, they're because they're a brilliant team. I thought it was very calm and collected under the six and very clear of of, of what we had to do next. And and uh, that's that's credit to the boys and the place that they were. In. Finally, from me, Eddie, don't go to to Rome next week because it's been postponed because of the coronavirus the concerns. Just your thoughts on that decision? Is it the right one in your eyes? Uh, again. I'm not privy to the information, so I really can't comment on it. Eddie, is, Eddie, is it important that you get the chance to play that game in sometime later in the year? Do you, do you want this tournament to have its closure? Well, explosion? Nick, we don't control that. So we can want for what we want, um, but we don't control it, so I'm not going to waste any energy. The only game I'm worried about next is Japan in Oita. It's going to be 85 degrees. 30 percent, 85 degrees humidity, 30 degrees. The only thing I want is eight on the cents. Um, so it's going to be a tough old game, and that's what we'll start preparing for. I mean, how does that feel for you? What Eddie's just said, the fact that you've won this game, and frustratingly, for all of the reasons that we understand, you can't now finish this tournament off next week. Oh, look, as players, we we deal with what is in front of us. Um, we fully concentrated on on today, and. Um, and as Eddie said, we'll have, a, we'll have a review of the past couple of weeks tomorrow and 
and then we'll go back to the clubs. We'll have plenty to get on with ourselves, and um, we'll deal with what's in front of us. What kind of strides do you feel this England team has made, say after particularly that first half in Paris, the rest of the championship so far? Yeah, well, I, th I think we've I think we've grown, like I said, and and. Hopefully we've grown in, in many ways, not just a couple, um, and that's that's massive in terms of in terms of keep talking about uh, momentum being a big part of the game, and for that to happen, you've got to you've got to make sure you're on every part of your game um, because it's all joined up, and I think we've been working hard to make sure we do that. Eddie, how much is a triple crown at least a historic piece of silverware? Some reward for your team's endeavours. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, prestigious trophy it's good to win um, so we're grateful for that um, and we'll worry about the next game how close do you feel England are now compared to pre-tournament when you obviously said about the ambition quite rightly being the best team in the world hopefully ever one day how, what steps have you seen in that ultimate goal over the last four or five weeks well, I think you know that's that's a that's a goal you never actually achieve it but that's what you want to aspire to do um, and if I look at our results since the last six nations, we've been winning at a, a rate of 80%. So that's a pretty good team. Um, but we want to get better. As I said to the boys after the game, yeah, you can feel within the team everyone wants to get better. We're making strides. It's not a straight line. You have your ups and, and downs. But I really enjoyed the toughness we played with today under a difficult situation. So to highlight Henry Slade coming on, and I thought it did really, really what did you think? Yeah, no, did really well, mate. Uh, yeah, it's probably trained there for 15 minutes, hasn't had a lot of rugby, and he had to play 80 minutes in a, it, which was probably in, in the highest ball in play uh, game that we played in. So he did really well. Is that now even more of an option for you in your mind moving forward? A good problem, possibly? Uh, we've got plenty of options, um, and that's a good thing. You know, increasing the depth of our squad, uh, increasing the versatility of our players. You know, if we got another injury, we would have had to play Ben Earl at blindside winger. Um, and he's been training there, um, so that's another option we've got. Owen, how much was uh, physicality and the number of dominant factors, uh, dominant tackles, a key factor in that game? I think when you always when you play in these games, physicality is a big part of it. Um, you know, that's two that's two good packs going at it up front, and and I thought. Um, our boys have they have done throughout the tournament. Uh, enjoyed defending today, um, and it's a big part of how we play. Were there any worries in those last uh, few minutes, or did you always uh, feel that the, the clock was on your side? Uh, we were not playing the scoreboard. I didn't feel we were we were playing what's in front of us, and I thought the boys fought uh, fought extremely hard for each other, uh, being numbers down, and it felt like. It didn't feel like we were daunted by by that situation. It felt like we were growing, and obviously they managed to score a couple of tries, which was disappointing. But the feeling within the group and the energy that was that was there, and the fight for each other was, I thought, was outstanding. Eddie, you said your next match is your, your next focus is Japan in order to will you rotate your squad for that in the long season and take some new faces. Got a plan in mind? Well, the only priority we got is winning, so we'll pick a side to win. So you take your, you take your strongest. Uh, I just said we'll pick a side to win. Eddie, um, you've only lost here twice in the whole time you've been a coach at England. How important is that that Twickenham becomes a fortress for you and your team? Uh, well, I think Six Nations is massively important, isn't it? Because you get run out of town if you lose at home. Uh, and that's the reality. Uh, you become that Australian coach. Um, so it's important to, important to win at home, but it's important to win everywhere. You know, we don't want to be a team that just wins at Twickenham, we want to win everywhere. And that's our goal. We're not we're not there at the moment, but we believe we've made some strides this tournament, and we're we're in a positive direction. And why do you think that is a lot slightly different? Then why are you so strong at home, and obviously some away games maybe slip away from you? Well, I think I just see that over the last twelve months we've won at eighty percent. Um, so that that means that we've lost twenty percent of our games. Um, so I don't think that's a major issue, um, but. You just got to play a little bit better away from home. One start, more question. At the start of the tournament in Paris, you said that you looked at Pep Guardiola and you judged by the response of the players as to whether you want to stay on in this job beyond next year. Now the tournament's over, how, how do you um, Still judging, mate. Do you, how, still how judging. Judgment period do you want to 
Uh, well, as long as it needs to. Eddie, George Cruz did uh, wave goodbye when he came off. Um, did you like for his last game? Well, he's definitely kicked the ball for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he's definitely kicked the ball for his last time. Because we're going to send him to a foot doctor this afternoon. Tonight, he's getting that left foot amputated. Eddie, you seem to catch the Welsh defence a bit narrow at times up today. Was that something you've seen beforehand as a potential? Can you do oh, well, I think it's always about the speed of the ball. We were able to generate some good speed of ball as they were at the end, and they were able to generate a lot of passing in their game. It's always about the speed of the ball. Um, yeah, I know there's been a lot of criticism that they're defending too tight, but you know you either you, ha you have certain systems of defence and you've got to make it work. You know, in any system of defence, there's there's frailties in it, um, and if you get quick ball, you can expose any 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 defence. Do Wales look to like a side in transition, trying to play a slightly different game from last year? Oh, I think it's a tough period for them. You know, um, they've been through through a fantastic period under Warren. You know, you look at their side today, 850 caps. Yeah, you know, so it's a very mature team. And once you get to that 850 caps, you know there's some regeneration coming, and that's the difficult part. The coach has changed, um, and they've had a tough Six Nations, but goodness me, if you're a Welsh supporter today, you'd be pretty pleased with the spirit they showed. I thought they were outstanding, and I think Pivac's doing a good job there. So, yeah, you know, he's going to be feeling the heat a bit, but I think he's doing a really good job, and, and I think you need to be a bit kind to him. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.